good morning. <laughs> um, actually, this is my second take because I just started recording. Well, I didn't record, I was talking, and then I realized I hit, hadn't hit record, so redo on that. Um, I'm currently actually in our newly laid driveway. It's doing great, it's almost, it's still packing in, but it's solid enough that we can drive in. And so now that the driveway is done and graded onto the property, we can start getting our posts moved and setting up our new gates. Now we have installed gates before, um, but these gates are huge. They're, so we have two gates and they're each 18 feet long. So thought, well, what the heck, let's have some fun. Let's share with you guys installing two gates, how we're doing it, and maybe it might be something that you guys might uh, enjoy learning how to do, or if you have any tricks or tips that maybe something we did wrong, please share because we're still learning. We're still learning ourselves. So that's what we're doing today. Here is the driveway. It's not complete because we still have to put in the, uh, you have to do mitered ends on the culverts with concrete around it but yeah so we got a 40 foot culvert and it has to have a two to one slope at each end so the driveway in total is gonna be 36 feet so we've got two 18 foot gates and we are gonna get the maximum width of our driveway so we have an easy time pulling in and out with trailers but, so whenever we open the fence up so that they could grade it out into the property, we set up temporary brace posts. Well, we've got to pull those brace posts up and move them in so we can set up the gate. So the first thing that we did was we laid out our two gates so that we can see where the center is, where we want them to be, so we can go ahead and set our posts in the right place for them. It might be overkill, but we have eight foot posts that are six to seven inches thick. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any thicker than that aside from ordering custom posts. But we are sinking them four feet in the ground just to make sure that they are really anchored to sustain these huge gates because they are very heavy. So you will notice there is a little blue piece of tape. We have marked the pothole, post pot <laughs> we have marked the post hole digger with tape at the four foot mark so Davis has that to go off of for the depth marker. Always remember your line where it's on the other post. You can set your line to where the other side. Yeah. Because we're setting fence posts, you want to go back. Or the front, never the middle. Yeah. So our line is pulling, as you can see on the other side, it's pulling off the back of the post. Okay. So when we set this, we want it to be at the back. It's definitely lower than the other one. So we want to make sure that when we check the level of the posts, that we are checking both sides, not just one side. We want to check two sides of it. That will tell us that it is level and straight. Bring it more down to the middle of the oh, post yeah. too, because we're not point. we're not using as long of a level. So you want to get down into your middle. You want to level your middle because the posts aren't always going to be 100% smooth on the sides. I mean, these are agricultural fence posts. Uh, so it's best just to go ahead and get your level from the from the middle. That way the whole pole in general looks straight. Alright, I think this is as straight as we can get. Get some dirt in them. There's a lot of water down there. Yeah. So I can only go so deep because I hit water and every time I went to go pull up my post hole diggers, it was just mud and it was just falling out. So we're gonna set it and we're gonna see how well she does don't want to do concrete because we're not 100% solid on this being the actual post. We might, after we're done building the house, we might put in a big, nice entrance with tall with the tall posts. And then these corner posts would just be reused somewhere else along the property. Or we need to put some corner posts in. So we're going to fill up the hole a little bit. 
around all the sides. Double check. And because this is a corner post, you want to pack as you go. So he filled the hole halfway and he is going through and making sure that it is thoroughly packed in before we continue laying more dirt. This was a permanent fence post that we replaced two years ago. Yeah. Uh, and we kept it here because it was already thick enough to use as a temporary brace. Uh, so what we need to do is take this post out and swap it with our other posts so that we got our two actual corner posts. Taking the barbed wire off of the fence first and then we can try and get this fence nail out so we can dismantle the structure. Try not to touch the electric wire. <laughs> Why is it spicy? Why is it spicy? Spicy wire. So we got the post removed from the hole. That's going to become the new uh, kind of in-between post as like for the brace post setup. So Davis is now removing the fence nail from that post and getting it up out of the ground to bring over here. So Davis is marking in the post for where the, the um, barbed wire is going to run so that it's somewhat level with the rest because we're discovering that it looks like the wire around the property was not actually really spaced properly. There's places where there's variations in spacing. Normally for a five strand barbed wire fence you would start with 10 inches from the ground and then it'd be 10 inches spacing from there. Ours is nine and a half inches from the ground up each. So he's going to get that marked. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this um, middle post. It's kind of like a brace for the two big posts in place. And we're going to use, we got some uh, eight inch common spikes. We got them from Tractor Supply. So we're going to use these to kind of pin it and hold it up. And then whenever we tighten it down, the post will kind of sandwich it together. And there you have it, as presented by my lovely man Davis over there. That is an H brace. All done. Now that we got the one side done, we're going to go back in and we're going to do the other side now. Show us how it's done. Come on, tighten that down hard.
All I know is these things are solid. Now that we have the brace posts and the tensioning wire complete, now it's time to rerun the barbed wire in preparation to hang the gates. So he is splicing the barbed wire to the old barbed wire so that we can run it further than what it reaches. So he's basically setting up two loops linked to each other. Bring me the other wire. Right here. Let me get my gloves. All right, so now that the barbed wire fence has been put up, now it's time to hang the gates. So we ran out of daylight and we actually were missing a uh, one of the mounts. So we had to go get a mount and we've got, we kind of temporarily secured it with wire until we got back. So we're gonna go ahead and get that wire set. But I mean, look at them. So obviously things are gonna change. We're gonna have to remount them again whenever we actually grade the driveway out into the pasture. Cause right now there's such a huge slope downward. Our property is much lower than the road itself. So it slopes down drastically. So here is higher than there, but then there's places on the outside where it's the same level. It's kind of 
funky right now because it's all unlevel and such. So we've currently got that gate higher up in the middle so we can sweep out and we're going to probably have to do the same thing with this until we grade the driveway. But then once the driveway is all done after the construction, we'll reset these posts and the gates will be higher up. But